Okay, and now we're going to be talking about my boy, my favorite public figure. You know him. You love him. It's Harvey he? Weinstein. Oh. oh, I mean, no, not Harvey. It's uh, Ryan Kavanaugh. Uh. Wait, is that Ryan? Or is well, that Ryan? At this point, I figured you would be able to tell the difference. They, since they don't look, look so similar. And they don't really, though, but... Um. I, I, Okay, so I think I think this is Ryan. Uh, and you're learning. <laughs> okay, so that's Ryan Kavanaugh. Good job. He's the majority owner of Triller, the company that's suing me. And today, I'm happy to announce that we have filed our motion to dismiss. Let's go. We have filed our our uh, anti slap We are coming. We are coming in waves. We are coming waves. Yes. Mm-mm-mm. And we are about to make... Another fair use precedent on Matt Haas 2.0. The next uh, boss fight of yeah. my career. I am so excited. <laughs> you know, before we get into the motion, which Leonard French, who is a copyright attorney on YouTube, I'll say this. Um, let me just tell you about how beautiful this motion is. Now, this is Leonard French, a copyright attorney. He did a lot of videos about our previous lawsuit. Listen to what he had to the say about this. The first fair use factor. The central purpose of the first fair use factor is to see whether and to what extent the new work is transformative. A use is transformative when it adds something new, further purpose, different character, altering the copyrighted work with new expression, meaning, or message. The Ninth Circuit has also explained that if the allegedly infringed work is used as raw material, transformed in the creation of new information, new aesthetics, new insights, understandings, this is the very type of activity that the fair use doctrine intends to protect for the enrichment of society. Moreover, the more transformative the work, the less the significance of the other fair use factors, like commercialism, that may weigh against a finding of fair use. It is well established that among the best recognized justifications for copying from another's work is to provide comment or criticism of it, and they go on to cite the Matt Haas case. Which is just, this is poetry at this point. Indeed, the Supreme Court concurs in Google. A subsequent work is transformative because it comments on the original or criticizes it. In Campbell versus Acuff Rose Music, a comment and criticism traditionally have had a claim to fair use protection as transformative works. For copyright geeks, this is a wet dream. This is, this is a beautifully written motion to dismiss. And, I, and I'm as proud of it as I'm allowed to be without sounding condescending, because I have nothing, I look up to this. I aspire to this level of clarity in my <laughs> law practice. The, the guy loves it. And by the way, Matt, uh, the Hussein Zada is the case, our first fair use lawsuit that made a case law a precedent. And so we cite it many times in this motion, which, as he says, is poetry. Listen to how he talks about this in the beginning. Obviously, the motion is very long and legal and stuff. There's a lot more interesting stuff in the anti-slap, which I'm going to show you guys. And this is all very entertaining, I promise. But just to show you what a beautiful piece of literature, of law we've written here. Are we live? Listen to this man talk. we should be going live. I'm green up there. And we now have a live connection <clears throat> here. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Good morning. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. But you, you could be forgiven after this story if you want to add a plus one to your favorite copyright attorneys, because the Kleins have hired an attorney in California who has filed this epic, absolutely epic motion to dismiss. Really quick, just a quick summary of love what that. we've got. Listen to this. He loves it. I do. And I saw when I watched this, he goes on to explain that he is actually opposing counsel to right. your lawyer in a totally unrelated case. And despite that, in a very uh, classy way, um, says that he's so impressed by this and that your lawyers did an amazing job. Yeah. My lawyers are the brick greatest. I love them. This is the same guy, the same guy who worked on my... Um, Haas. Matt Haas. Right. And I and you know, when I first got sued, I was like, the boys are back. <laughs> Let's because, get the team back together. Um, is the lawyer who I work closely with who wrote the the brief for the last one. And I was like, I need like he just he is so good at this shit. 
And uh, he has delivered yet again. Wow. No. So I know that there's a lot to dig in here too. So before we go too deep, uh, we should take our break. Right? Okay. Well, we can take a break, but before we do, I want to tease you. Ryan Kavanaugh sent me a DM on fucking Instagram. <laughs> it's absolutely. They epic. May, you, you may have noticed this on the uh, wall behind Ethan. Oh yeah. Uh, other side. Yeah. We framed his DM to me. <laughs> but we'll 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 explain this when we come back from our quick commercial break. Thank you. Peace and love. Time to take a short break. Thank you, Rudy. We are back. So this is this is amazing. Ryan is such an insecure douche. And go ahead. You can add that to amended complaint that I... He defamed me. He called me an insecure douche. Which is basically the level of complaints in there. But anyway, on, on July 11th, we didn't ever even see this. And AB, you alerted me to this. Tell me how you found... How you f- we figured this out. So occasionally I'll check the podcast DMs uh, to see if we have any message requests of potential guests or interesting stories, any, any juice. And I was scrolling through um, and I saw a message like from back in July from Ryan Cavanaugh. And I sent it to you at 4 a.m. and said, uh, I suggest you check your DM uh, request as well. So he had emailed us every page of the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. So I went back and checked my personal messages, and uh, he also messaged me every page of the lawsuit, and I was like, hmm, I didn't see it at first. I thought it was the same thing, but I went up all the way, and I was like, holy shit, Ryan sent me a direct message on July 11th. Listen to this shit. Ethan. I am not sure why you have decided to take it upon yourself and your show to malign, attack, slander, and defame me. I do not know you. I also don't know why you are spending thousands I dollars to have thousands of dummy accounts post fake statements about me on my Instagram and tens of thousands to have fake app store reviews of Triller. Worse yet, you have dedicated an entire show of yours reading your own fake reviews. While amusing and slightly annoying at best, I would advise you stop and mitigate your damage now. Your toy podcast seems fun and all, But this is real business with real consequences, and you are causing real damage. Clearly, you are a very unhappy and disturbed human to take it upon yourself to attack someone you don't know with false and misleading information, especially to spend tens of thousands of dollars on it. But it must stop. You have been warned, and I will not be threatened and maligned and stand by idly. Govern yourself accordingly, sir. Ryan Kavanaugh. Uh, This dude really thinks he's like a movie supervillain. He thinks he's Don Corleone. (laughs) Seriously. Bro, you ain't you ain't shit, bro. You just don't you're just like a, a professional bankruptor. Ugh, I so mean, awful. I'm assuming he really thought he would scare me. He doesn't yeah, make- maybe if he had had somebody proofread it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe the, all, the ty- all the typos and grammatical errors kind of like, takes the wind out of the sails a little bit. Like, oh yeah, Ryan, that's really good. It could have been written by Kim from by Kimstar, and I would have uh, <laughs> not blinked. I love that he thinks that you're spending tens of thousands of dollars to uh, malign him on the App Store and stuff. Yeah, we got to break this down a little bit. Let's see. And it was used in a book, huh? <laughs> Let's see. He accused me of spending thousands of dollars to post dummy accounts, fake statements about me on Instagram. And I'm sorry, dude. Like that shit was free. This, this I didn't do, I'm not doing anything. Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? Huh? I mean, I have a pot. I have. I have. <laughs> huh? I'm sorry. That sounds to me like slander. What fucking proof do you have, huh? 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 
<laughs> that I have hired. And by the way, self-report, you seem to know a lot about hiring and the cost of having fake dummy accounts, Mr. Ryan Bitch-Ass Kavanaugh. Indeed. I- indeed. Which maybe we'll reveal some more Projection information and about infection. that. We may, we may have some information about that, actually, but maybe we have enough to talk about today already. So Projection and confession. I have never hired a single dummy account. I am a dummy, and I left to review, so I, am, I guess there's one dummy account, me. Yep. But I'm sorry if people don't like your app. Those aren't fake statements, bro. Your app sucks. It's flipped. Your own guy said it. He goes, you're reading your own fake reviews? Okay, sick weirdo. I would never do that. Ugh, it's so flipped. And then he says, clearly I'm a very unhappy and disturbed human. Excuse me? Huh? I don't have two DUIs. <laughs> and, uh, I am not being sued by my nanny. And I have never lied under oath, bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> What's this headline here? Deadline. Relativity fabricated memo claiming sexual harassment against former co-president Adam Fields. Judge awards 8.4 million. What was the name on that? Edited uh, that forged memo? Who was it last edited by? Cav Cav. Cav Cav. Cav Cav. Cav. I'm calling that a fraud. <laughs> well, ja Rule, Cav. ja Rule would call it that. We're not making a judgment statement. Ja Rule there. calls it fraud. Yeah. That's fraud. That's fraud. <laughs> ja Rule knows a lot about the topic. <coughs> ja Rule doesn't speak for us, of course. Ja Rule speaks for himself, and his views do not res- uh, represent that of the H3 podcast. Let's think of how to dig ourselves <laughs> out of this fraud. <laughs> uh, you have been warned, sir. A threat. A govern yourself accordingly. Well, I did, and I said, fuck you. Sue me, bitch. <laughs> you are nothing to me except a giant douche trying to s- censor my free speech. Huh? Fuck, you should govern yourself accordingly, douche fuck. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. The guy doesn't know anything. This was a comment under Leonard French's uh, video that I thought was pretty was pretty good. Um, here, this was two comments back to back in his in his <sighs> chat. It said, H3 and their lawyers just casually reminding the world that they literally set the modern precedent for fair use. Yeah, I think you should do a little fucking research for trying to bully people, douche. Of all people, why would they go after someone who defined copyright law of reaction videos? Good question. <laughs> they I'm probably, happy to do it again. They probably just didn't know like what they were stepping into. They didn't, they didn't do their research on you. Look, back then, I was broke. Now, I'm fucking rich. Let's be honest. Yeah. The cost of this lawsuit... You literally it, it, have fuck you money, and, I, and you're I, using I, it. I, yeah, I'm literally... <laughs> well, and even... I'm happy to send that precedent. So, yeah, fuck you... I mean, at this point, with the way the trailer's hemorrhaging money, I might even be richer than Ryan Kavanaugh. Money, even. <laughs> I definitely will be by the time trailer goes bankrupt. So anyway. Uh, oh, there's some other great ones. Uh, this is stuff I've been waiting to show, and now that everything's filed, I can show it. Look at this. Now, when they first started threatening us and stuff, they asked for a million dollars. They said that uh, we had caused $50 million of damages and all, all this insane shit. So we, in an act of absolute generosity, magnanimously, to just make this go away, to not have stress, to be, you know, make every uh, fair, uh, 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 good faith effort to resolve this effort amicably, instead of having to waste a judge in court's time, we offered him $25,000. Not a small amount of money. No. And so... It's that, probably like half of his net worth. Yeah, at this point. For sure. And so, you know... I didn't even want to do that, but uh, I think we considered with our lawyers and everything. We're like, this would better. We'd be happier for this just to go away. You know, Ela was Ela's pregnant, and there's just a lot of. We're like, okay, of course it sucks, but yeah, I mean, it's easier than doing a lawsuit. <laughs> for me, I was always very gung ho. Like, okay, I'm not gonna be silenced. This is fair fucking use. Fuck, like I just, I'm ready to go, dude. When it comes to this shit. Uh, but anyway, so we offered that in good faith, and they countered with, they said, no, we need $900,000. And they needed us to make the following statement. You ready? 
They wanted me to say this publicly, so I guess I am doing that for them. But here it is verbatim. <laughs> we are pleased to announce that we have reached a settlement with Triller Fight Club. As a result of us pirating the event, Triller surprisingly has embedded watermark technology unlike anything we've seen to date. Huh? We had to pay millions to settle in order to avoid 50 million or more in potential liability. We encourage anyone who pirated the event to take Triller's amnesty offer very seriously and pay the $50 before what happens to us happens to you. Triller is incredibly serious about this. And we do believe they will find most, if not all, people who pirated. This is so fucking unhinged. Ah. This is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. They so like not only <laughs> not only nine hundred thousand, but they also wanted me to read this hack, fucking insane, to lie for them. So basically, lying about how much I paid them. Yes, lying that people are that they're hunting everyone down. Right. Um. This is insane. Oh, surprising watermark technology. Shut the fuck up. Unlike anything you've ever seen before. Can you ima <laughs> <laughs> imagine <laughs> Ethan reading that unironically? Like, just try to imagine Ethan. Well, it just goes with to show how in touch they are. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't know who they were. They didn't, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is Cav Cav uh, coming after me. So basically, at one point, we said, you know what? Uh, Fuck this. It's so nice that we can finally reveal this because I feel like there's an, uh, a, a small but significant proportion of the audience that has questioned whether, you know, you were maybe being a little petty with the way that you were dealing with True. Ryan and everything. And now that this is out, like people in, in plain view, people can see just like, what a fucking douche this guy is. Yeah, like, I... Thank you, Truly. Dan. That, that's a good point to say because, like, at first, we really tried our best. And you remember I was like, I'm going to hold my tongue. Yeah, you were, we're saying good, shit at first. We're in good faith uh, mediation. Right. We want to resolve this. And I feel like we made we made a, a pretty fair offer. Consi you offered like, them $25,000 for doing nothing wrong to just be yeah. like, all yeah. right, let's just drop this issue. And that's more than fair. No thing. Yeah, but like the statement alone, like if they said no payment and read the statement, I would have said go fuck yourself. <laughs> right. Obviously, you know what I mean? Yeah. Double nothing. Like, um, no, the the lawyers and Ryan, uh, the lawyers representing Ryan have been nothing but uh, just unprofessional, belligerent, and uh, absolutely uh, unworkable. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's Madhouse two point oh. It really is. To count like. <laughs> to counter offer with nine hundred thousand dollars, like, you know, this still would have been douchey. But if they had come back and said, like, no, we want a hundred thousand, you know, four times what you offered or whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have paid them that much. Right. Anyway. But like, but like, at least like be realistic. Yeah, it's like within yeah. the realm of possibility, maybe that like you you lowball at first, they highball, and then so, you you work something out. Yeah. But like, and insane a million number, dollars almost they want coupled with a statement that I could never. Could no, never I utter. I could never utter. Yeah. yeah. Triller, surprisingly, has embedded in watermark technology unlike anything we've ever seen. Yeah, don't worry, Triller. I'm not sure anyone's even concerned about bootlegging your shit events. Ugh, it's so flipped. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, fuck you, Triller. So... This has been filed. The anti slap is filed. And here I want to show some of my favorite moments from the anti slap. Now, an anti slap is so the motion to dismiss is basically for the copyright infringement, all that shit. But they sued me twice. I don't know if you know, knew this for tortoise interference, which is some really dumb shit. They're saying that uh, we caused them to interfere with their business with fake reviews, which, excuse me, dude, I'd like to see some evidence for that. And in California, they have a law, the anti-slap, it stands for, um, 
strategic lawsuit against public participation. So if there's um, if there's public interest involved, if and generally these lawsuits are to chill people from talking about them, then the anti slap can be used to strike down the lawsuit and also force Ryan to pay for our legal fees straight up. So, yeah, the anti slaps here to read it uh, specifically is intended to prevent people from using courts and potential threats of a lawsuit to intimidate people who are exercising the First Amendment rights. Literally me. Thank you, California. <laughs> so we're using the anti slap to address the interference one. Here's the intro to the anti slap here. Free speech for me, but not for thee. This is the theme relentlessly campaigned by plaintiff Triller and its majority owner, Ryan Kavanaugh, to harass, punish, and silence defendants for exercising the First Amendment rights. Triller and Kavanaugh have repeatedly abused the judicial sy system to silence commentary and criticism made about them on the podcast. This assault on defendants' lawful criticism began by Triller and Kavanaugh, causing Triller subsisted, subsisted, subsidiary, 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 Triller Fight Club 2 to sue defendants for copyright infringement for the use of a short clip of Jake Paul versus Ben Askren for commentary and criticism. Triller and Kavanaugh are now suing defendant for the lawful speech criticizing the copyright action trailer and Kavanaugh. So let me read. That's the intro. Let me read you some juicy morsels in here. <laughs> Hit me with them morsels. Oh, is this the same? It is the same link. Okay. Here's a section. Uh, there's a part, section in, in uh, motions for statement of facts. So here's the statement of facts for Ryan Kavanaugh, the public figure. Statement of facts. Kavanaugh is the majority owner of Triller. Kavanaugh was the former CEO of Relativity Media. At Relativity, this is an old version, so if you see that it's not cited and stuff, then that's why. But in the final version, there's all... Uh, More citations. And there, it's all stuff. cited and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Comes the majority of Triller. Kavanaugh was the former CEO of Relativity Media. At Relativity, Kavanaugh drove the company into bankruptcy twice. <laughs> Statement of fact. <laughs> By the second bankruptcy, Relativity had approximately $30 million in assets and nearly $600 million of liabilities. Oof. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm more of a... Uh, More of an asset guy than listen, a liability yeah, guy. Listen, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not like a big-time entrepreneur, but I know that's that's not good. <laughs> Despite relativ Relativity's insolvency, Kavanaugh made Relativity pay him a $2.5 million consulting fee. Mm. Hmm. Sketchy. In an arbitration, the Honorable Terry Friedman found that Kavanaugh fabricated a memo alleging sexual harassment against the former president of Relativity, Adam Fields. Statement of fact. That's fraud. <laughs> In the same arbitration, Kavanaugh falsely testified under oath that the memo was authored by former in-house counsel at Relativity. In retaliation for exposing his false uh, testimony, uh, Kavanaugh sued Mr. Fields. Damn, that's all statement of fact, huh? Hmm. Kavanaugh has been embroiled in several other public controversies. For example, Kavanaugh's nanny was forced to sue Kavanaugh because he refused to pay her. Facts. Oh. Um, and an executed verified complaint drafted by this lawyer uh, and covered by the press, Kavanaugh's former business partner, Elon Spar, accused Kavanaugh's new business venture, Prox Proxima Media, of being a Ponzi scheme. Where have I heard about that before? This was um, written by by Variety. Oh, right, Gene Mattis in Variety magazine, the the trade paper, the industry trade paper, very reputable. Right. Statement of fact. Kavanaugh also received two arrests and a conviction for driving under the influence. Facts. Kavanaugh's controversies have resulted in him being shunned by Hollywood. The CEO of Stolstice Media described Kavanaugh best. Each time someone lies at Cannes, Ryan Kavanaugh gets a royalty. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that's they, quite the burn, I gotta they, say. Those are all, that's just a background there, a little background on Ryan. 
Uh, here is some of the, this is like the defamation stuff. All right, so here is their first claim of defamation. They say, I apparently I said Triller is and Mr. Kavanaugh runs a Ponzi scheme, which, of course, I never said, obviously. So we said this statement failed. I said he did. Ha- I mean, I never said he runs a Ponzi. I made a variety of wrote an article about it. Uh, yeah. Triller is uh, this statement fails to meet the First Amendment requirement for defamation. Foremost, this statement was never said in the podcast. Rather, examining each of the podcasts as a whole, it is apparent that the podcast accurately discussed the situation. Mr. Spar made in his 2019 verified complaint against Kavanaugh and Proxima Media. Therefore, Triller cannot show that this statement was ever made, let alone that it was even false. Right. Um, This is a great one. This is defamation, apparently. Triller falsely pre- uh, presented that comedian Kevin Hart uses the app. That's defamation. Listen to this. This statement is true because when the podcast aired, Triller's description for the app stated that millions have made Triller videos alongside huge global stars such as Kevin Hart, despite Kevin Hart having no presence on the app. Indeed, Triller effectively concedes this point by removing Mr. Hart's name from the Triller's app description after filing this lawsuit. Therefore, this statement is not actionable. Ugh, it's so awkward. Just search Kevin Hart on Triller and prove me wrong. Oh, this is probably the most damning. Oh, my God. This is the one we're most worried about. <laughs> me and, and my attorneys were, we, we had a lot of deep conversations about how we were going to fight this one. Hmm. Of course, the most damning evidence, the app is flipped. (laughs) Defamatory statement. This statement was originally made by Mr. Beck, a prominent social media personality, as he was creating a video using the Triller app. Client, uh, in the video, Mr. Beck stated, yo, Triller, my thing is flipped. Yo, Triller, my thing's flipped. Because he was experiencing issues with the Triller's app camera function. Therefore, insofar as this statement contains an an assertion of facts, it is true and not actionable. Triller, your thing is quite clearly flipped. Ugh, it's all flipped. (laughs) This one is tough, too. I don't know how we're going to beat this one. Mr. Kavanaugh bears a physical resemblance to Harvey Weinstein. Defamatory. To have an opinion on someone's opinion. Here, if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, the same holds true for the lack thereof. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> now, uh, you know, basically, what's his complaint? That Harvey Weinstein's ugly? And that he thinks he's beautiful? You know, like, what's defamatory? Or, like, what's the complaint? What's wrong with how Harvey Weinstein looks? Are you fat shaming? You know. I mean, this is his friend. Right. Like, why would he talk about his friend like yeah, that? Yeah, hey, come on. But he should be happy to be compared physically to him. This statement constitutes non actual opinion because it expressed the subjective perception that Kavanaugh looks like Weinstein, in which some H3 podcast members agree and some disagree. <laughs> it's very true. I disagree strongly. Further, this expressed. statement is of concerning Kavanaugh and not Triller. Not actionable. I happen to think he looks just like Harvey Weinstein. But Dan, to this day, still says... I don't don't see see it. I don't see it even a little bit. I literally can't even tell the difference. (laughs) Like, is that Ryan? We went over this earlier in the episode. I I thought we we made this clear. It's just so confusing. (laughs) I tend to just look at the shirt color. That's how I remember. Show me, uh, uh, Ian. So this is Ryan in the black shirt? Uh... Uh, no, no, no. The blue shirt. Wait. Yeah, the blue shirt. I, I look at both photos. The one in the other corner where he's wearing blue. That's how I figure it out. Mm. Oh, you do. You have to do a mat. Like, okay, so here's Ryan. Oh, right, right. Right. same outfit. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That's how ultimately I. <laughs> that's pretty smart. Yeah. It's that uncanny. It's pretty smart way to, to decode that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell the difference, to be honest. Mr. It's called uh, pros, uh, prosopagonosia, by the way. Oh, I think you that? might have that. Where uh, people, it's a disorder where you, face blindness. You can't. Uh, oh, you think I'm face blind? Uh, if you think bro, that they look similar, look similar. How are you going to accuse me of being face blind, bro? <laughs> Everyone on the crew says they see the resemblance. It, I, it, you might be the one that's face. No, I think prosopagonosia might be uh, uh, contagious. 
Oh. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. you might have given it to everybody. I, I'm immune, okay. personally. All right. <laughs> Do you see it? And then his, fi- his final <laughs> claim is that Mr. Kavanaugh is suing the defendants. He goes, I'm not suing the defendants. It's Triller, the company that I own the majority of. This statement is substantially true. Triller's counsel told defendants that Kavanaugh was behind the lawsuit, one. Further illustrating wait, Kavanaugh's... Wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. He's suing you for defamation for saying that he's suing you. Yes. Well, that is his, his argument is that I'm not suing you. Triller, the my company, company that I owner in, <laughs> is suing you. <laughs> and that's defamation. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's embarrassing that they even wrote this. So is that one? So, so is the defamation lawsuit him personally? Like, are there? Yes. Okay. So Triller so and he Kavanaugh. He, so he is suing. He, he exactly. but only after you said that he was suing. Exactly. Him. Okay. Got it. Throw the book at him, boys. <laughs> Triller's counsel told us that Kavanaugh was behind the copyright action. That's how we even learned about him. Right. They were trying to scare us. Like Ryan Kavanaugh's behind it. You don't want to fuck with this guy. Oops. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Get better lawyers, Ryan. And then further further illustrating Kavanaugh's involvement are the first amended complaint, numerous mentions of allegations of false, misleading, and malicious statements concerning Kavanaugh. Wow, why do you care? And not Triller. Interesting. Triller's counsel sending Kavanaugh's retraction letter and that Kavanaugh is the majority owner of Triller and its subsidiaries. Thank you. Further, this statement is of a concerning Kavanaugh and not Triller. Finally, even assuming arguendo that this statement is false, Triller cannot prove actual malice because Triller led defendants to believe Kavanaugh was behind the copyright action and person action. Therefore, blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. Anyway, it's all up there and it's been a lot of fun. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to prove fair use again in court. And we have immortalized your absolutely um, terrifying message. It's a little obscured. It's absolutely uh, shaking in my boots. Govern yourself accordingly, sir. And our toy podcast. Our toy. I was just about to point that part out. How I'll- dare you, sir? This is not a toy. This is anything but a toy, this sir. Is serious business here. I was thinking maybe good merch could be like toy podcast. Ryan Kavanaugh, something. <laughs> My toy podcast. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. 